All right, everyone, we've got an awesome package that just arrived. This is my beloved whole set HE341 that has had magic worked by Bradley at Savage Fabrication. And we're gonna unbox it. So this is hopefully what is gonna get us to the 500 horsepower mark, as long as everything else that is supporting is good to go. Oh. Nice. There we go. Savage Fabrication, Instaspool Performance. Thanks, Bradley, for giving me a, a new uh, gasket and some, and uh, yeah, the new gaskets for the drain and for the flange. That's really nice. Mine is old and uh, all collapsed by now, so that's perfect. Um, let's set that down. Got some packaging to pull out here. Oh, oh, hey, this is it right here. So this is really cool. This is the old turbine wheel. So we'll get back to this more in a minute, but that sucker's heavy. I didn't realize how uh, heavy those were. So yeah, let me set that down. Dig in here a little bit. And then look at how well that's packaged. This is like, I feel spoiled. When I sent it out, it was uh, I didn't have much to send it in, and it was not this beautifully packaged. Look at that. So this is what you can expect when you get a turbo from Savage. They uh, definitely pack it for the long haul. This guy could go anywhere and be fine. So uh, let, me, let me pull it out of the box, and we'll take a look at it. So let me just set this guy up, and let's pull it out. Oh, have something to set it on, but... Here we go. We're gonna have to unpack it here. I have to say, in crazy impressed with the packaging. I, I'm not very good at packing stuff, and uh, when I see something that's well packaged, I admire it because I don't know how to do it very well. But this is awesome. Okay, so pull this guy out. And, ooh. Very nice. So from the beginning, from the front, from the front, other than being cleaned up a little bit, this is the same turbo that I sent out. So that Honey Badger painted housing and uh, same compressor wheel. But on the back side is where we start to see the goodness, the 67 mil that's in there. And you can see up in there, that's the 67 mil turbine blade. And you can see in there, he had to modify the housing. It was milled out. And I really appreciate his time on that because uh, I know that it was kind of a pain because of this flange that he had there. And this guy is the old turbine wheel, which is a 57, I believe. And then we went up to a 67. So this big old beast in there versus this. So you can see here, we go from a 12 blade to a 10 blade. And part of the 10 blade from the 12 blade is the area between the blades. So Bradley was telling me having more area between the blades gives more area for the gases to flow from the turbine housing around and out. And so that's what enables you to get some more flow as well as when he cuts this out, the curtain area, the opening where the nozzle is, increases too as he cuts it open. So we're actually able to make this housing, which for a lot of people, would they would think it's pretty small, this nine centimeter, it actually can flow better than like a 12 centimeter or some of these other um, HX variants. So pretty cool that that's, uh, that's part of the, the gig too. So yeah, really cool. I love this stuff. Thanks for sending this back. 
I'm going to put it on my desk and play with it every day. <laughs> so anyway, that'll be my new fidget. Put it on my desk and fidget. It'll be my fidget spinner. So sweet. Big 67. This is one of his R&D wheels out of his truck, which I'm honored to have. So very cool. And part of this is checking the exhaust back pressure. So I've got a sensor, I'm just gonna throw in on the manifold while I'm doing this, and we can check that and see if we can get some data. But everything else looks the part. Same old turbo, nothing crazy glorious or shiny, but what matters is the performance, not the looks, especially on this car. My next vehicle that I'm building, the E30, is gonna be way more flashy and nice but this guy is just about science. It's basically my living science project. So let's go uh, throw it on the car and see what, see what we can do. Thanks again. And don't forget to check out Savage Fabrication and Instaspool Performance. We'll go uh, slap this back on the car and check it out. Brad hooked me up with a little gasket that we're gonna throw on there. Uh, just good maintenance. I think my old one is leaking. So as long as they come off without snapping, I will be happy because you never know with this stuff. It's old, whatever, you know. Um, perfect. Back in the day, I modified this. I like ground it out and made it as smooth and as big as possible and actually bored through it with a bigger drill bit because I just wanted to give this as much priority as possible. So I have tried my best with this thing um, over the years and it seems to have not failed me. So yeah, we'll just go with that. Beautiful. And as far as I'm aware, nothing goes on these. You just literally just put them on. Um, and I've never really had any problems with that. Never leaked at all. So I don't want to put any uh, crazy gasket goop on there that'll cause me problems down the road. So we'll just tighten this guy back up. Okay, I think she's ready. I think she's ready. Another piece to this puzzle is back pressure. I have the sensor that I was using as fuel pressure and I've moved it around. So just gotta pop this off, throw it back into my line and throw a new compression fitting on. This one kind of got beat up previously. So I have the tap. I'm just gonna tap this out on my manifold one more time. Make sure it's all clean and good to go. Throw the new fitting in cut the copper off and uh, we'll be good to go. I just, uh, I need to know what the back pressure is on this. That will tell us how much in, that'll tell us a lot about what the turbine, the bigger turbine has done for uh, helping the motor breathe. Because we're trying to get the motor to breathe one to one as, as best as possible. So if we have 14 PSI on the intake, we want 14 PSI on the exhaust in the uh, manifold up to the turbo. So um, yeah. No worries. Uh, I cannot wait to get this guy in. Let's do it. Let's get it in and drive it. Okay, uh, we're making good progress. Um, got the new gasket. My other one was torched. Thanks for sending that, Brad. And gonna throw this new guy on. I have the new, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have the back pressure sensor back in. This is a sensor that I had to reinstall with the copper tubing. I had this previously for my other test, but it was just uh, a little bit damaged down here. So I had to cut it off, put a new fitting on, and then re-tap the fitting into the manifold. And uh, yeah, now we're looking good. So that's there, uh, re-tapped, 
and then uh, got that gasket on. Just doing a couple final small things and yeah, running this wire up into the cabin for the back pressure sensor and uh, we're about to drop the turbo on. So stay tuned and we'll uh, make it happen. All right, I had to clock the turbine housing. No big deal, totally normal. This was already clocked correctly on the compressor, but this one was just off a little bit. Absolutely normal to do, not anything crazy. Just need to loosen the band and spin it around just a little bit. But I figured if I've got it on the bench and I'm gonna spin it around, might as well look inside. So here's a comparison side by side of the wheels. Uh, you can see right here, there's the 57 and there's the 67. So uh, yeah, take a look there. So this is 12 blades and this is 10 blades. And the first thing you can tell is how much space there is between the blades. That is key when you go down in blades. So what Bradley was telling me is also how you gain flow capacity in one of the aspects of what uh, this changes and it gives you more area for the gas to flow through. So this, you drop a couple blades, you make it all bigger. And actually you can see compared to the stock, this hub in the center is actually smaller too, uh, just slightly, but uh, you gain quite a bit. So yeah, wow, you can tell it's like, let me set it on top here. This might be, we might be in the danger zone here, but yeah, right there you can tell. So pretty gnarly. Got this guy all cut out, looking beautiful, butamous. And uh, yeah, let's put it back together, get it thrown in the car. Okay, here we go, Brad. Just threw the turbo on, first start, see how it goes. Okay, just went for a jaunt in the BMW with the new turbo and it is sick. I don't have my laptop, I don't have anything set up right now to data log, but I can tell you the spool is like hardly different. It still comes on super soon. I mean like, I don't know, 25 to three, where it used to be like two to 25. Like it's, it doesn't really feel that much different when you're driving it, but up top it feels way better. I can tell this thing like lets the motor breathe better. The motor feels happier. So definitely awesome. First, yeah. First impressions of this thing are freaking good. Loving it. What do you think of the new turbo? This is such a great modification. It still feels like NA power, but it's, it pulls more in the top end. Like it's not like you lost a lot in the bottom end. It just feels like it keeps going. It's not as like- Doesn't taper flat. off. It doesn't flatten out quite as much. What's interesting for me is too, I I don't think I noticed it falling off before now that it pulls so yeah. hard in the top. Now exactly. you can notice I it. Yeah. feel like it pulled the same after 5,000 RPMs and now it feels like it continues to climb. So it's pretty good, huh? feels like it breathes a lot better, but it's still, has a boost down low, which is really nice. It just really is nice. Around town driving. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I think this is a great mod. So a little data share here. This is my boost pressure and back pressure on the original Holset HE341 before it was sent in for the big turbine modification. You can see back pressure is significantly higher than boost pressure. And if we put this as a ratio, that's 1.6 to one and where it would be ideal is if this was one to one. And so the goal of upgrading the turbine would be to get this to one closer to one point, uh, one to one. So after we got the turbine upgraded, let me switch it over. You can see we are now at 1.1. Uh, sometimes around 1.2, but for the most part, we're right in 1.1 to 1.2 to 1. So at 17 PSI of boost, 
19 psi of back pressure. That's looking really good. And the reason this is so important is so that the motor can breathe. The motor being designed as a naturally aspirated engine is designed to pump air at one to one. So an atmosphere of pressure on the intake and an atmosphere of pressure on the exhaust. So you want it to get as close to that as possible. Whereas on the old turbo, it still made good power, but it wasn't efficiently breathing and the VE in the fuel table was falling off quite heavily. So up towards red line, it would fall off. You go from peak torque where it was at like 106 on the VE table and it would drop down to like 101 or 97 at red line. So this is part of why this new turbo combination is going to be more efficient and make more power because the, now the engine can actually breathe. So we will get this thing back on the dyno as soon as possible. We've got an upgraded fuel pump and some other wiring and head studs and it's uh, basically ready to go. Just need to do some final tweaks on the tuning, make sure everything's ready for the dyno and uh, schedule an appointment. So look forward to getting this back on the dyno and uh, thanks for watching. And thanks again, special thanks to Bradley at Savage Fabrication. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without him and it's really cool to learn from the data and he's just as interested in data and uh, R&D as I am. So it's really cool to work with him. So thanks again, Bradley.